Welcome back to the channel. We are back on the dyno with the LS7, and it is time to find out what she is going to make. So, quick recap on the changes we made if you didn't catch the last video. The new camshaft is 262, 278 on a 115 lobe separation angle with a 112 ICL. Lift has also been increased from 0 0.700 to 0 0.753. We've also moved uh, to a really big, nicer set of headers. These are one and seven eight step to two inch primaries. Previously, we were running it with a straight set of one and three quarter primaries. I don't know why we were doing that. That was my mistake. And now we have the massive, super cool air intake tube, five inch girthy boy with the full bell mouth inlet to help condition the airflow. Again, prior, we were just running one tube, straight cut, no bell mouth. So we are hopeful to see some more power out of this LS7 beast. The motor's already hot, so we're gonna go ahead and start making some pools and find out exactly how much timing and AFR this new combo is gonna want, and then we'll come back and see what she's making. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to look at the results. So we started off, um, again, whenever we're starting with the new combination, uh, I like to be a little on the conservative side with timing. You know, we're not trying to push the envelope right off the bat. So we started with just 26 degrees of timing. So let me throw that graph up for you guys. And on the first freaking pool, it made 783. For comparison's sake, let me show you guys the best pull it did on the previous combo. There you go. So the previous combo had a peak power of 736 and the first hit, this motor made 783 with our new cam, bigger headers, and the optimized intake pipe tracked. So right off the bat, as I was watching the pool, I was just freaking out because I could just see the numbers were way higher than it had ever been. And that was on 26 degrees. So we knew we were onto something. All right, for now, I'm going to take off the previous best pool. We'll, we'll bring it back later. And now let me overlay the 26 degrees. So then we added two more degrees of timing. We, we weren't messing with air-fuel ratio because we'd already played with that a lot on the previous combo, and we, we already knew that 12 and a half uh, AFR was the sweet spot for this combo. So next pool, we bumped up two more degrees. I like to go by twos. And uh, look at this. It immediately jumped up a huge amount again. It picked up over 10 more horsepower and jumped up to 797. So now we're just, we're knocking on the door. It's like, hey, let us in, we're here. That was on 28. The best pull on the previous setup was on 30. So if uh, 28 was good, let's throw 30 in it. So let me pull off the 26 graph because we don't care about you no more. And now here is the 30 degree pool in red. And there you can see that magical, beautiful 800.3. And uh, at that time, it was like, holy cow. 
we did it. We have the recipe. We did that with a 2.2 inch intake valve also, not even a 2250. And uh, yeah, so again, if a little bit of timing picked up power, uh, uh, right here at 7300, I don't know why on the blue curve it has a little spike and then on the red curve it has a little dip. Sometimes the dyno, you know, sometimes it does stuff like that. We're not going to pay attention to that. So let me pull off the 28 and let me show you guys the 32. So 32 degrees versus uh, 30 degrees. 32 is in red, 30 is in blue. And you can see we're pretty much at timing limit. Um, it's actually kind of hard for me to explain. I, I don't know why, but it actually picked up power below 7,000 RPM. And then it didn't pick up anything right there in the meat. Um, but then it actually made a little bit more at the very last few hundred RPM. Generally, I don't think it's peak cylinder pressure giving us issues because peak cylinder pressure, from what I understand and what I've always believed was at peak torque. And as the torque comes down, the cylinder pressure is actually coming down too. Maybe I'm incorrect in that statement. Maybe that's why it kind of flatlined right there around peak horsepower. I'm not totally sure. Um, but again, uh, 32 versus 30, it didn't pick up much at all. You know, yeah, there's maybe five horsepower, maybe 10 horsepower at the very end of the pool. Uh, not totally worth it in my opinion. You're kind of starting to dip your toes over the edge. And with a motor that's 13 and a half to one, do you really want to be dipping your toes over the edge? So we shut the motor down. Uh, we back the timing back down to 30 degrees. Um, me and my buddies all took a little break. We got some snacks, we got some drinks and we came back and we warmed everything back up and made one more hit with 30 degrees and check this out. So let me pull everything off. Let me bring up the best pool prior and let me give you all the last dynograph, the 51st pool. So we've done 51 total hits on this motor now and she made 808.6 horsepower and 647 torque. So now you guys are looking at the most power this motor's ever made overlaid um, with the prior best combo with the other camshaft, the smaller headers and the suboptimal intake air tracked. So to kind of recap, we had a peak power, man, pretty much from 7,000 to 8,000, it's within 10 horsepower the entire time. It actually makes over 800 horsepower at 6,900 RPM, it registered 801 with 30 degrees of timing, and it stayed there until 8,000 RPM. That is a gain of, if I'm doing my math correctly, 808 to 736, I need a calculator. So it picked up 72 horsepower on camshaft, headers, and a little giant elephant trunk of an intake tube. And I just started with the long one. I, I kind of, I know in the previous videos, I had mentioned that we were going to try different lengths. I think that's kind of silly because in the vehicle, it's going to have, you know, a basically, this is a shorter than the vehicle tube will be. The tube in the vehicle is going to be longer anyways. So there's no real point in going shorter if what's going to be in the vehicle isn't that. So we just left it as the full 18 inch pipe, five inch with that big bell mouth uh, uh, in inlet, you could call it which I think just helps condition the airflow. And I, I actually would argue that the longer 18 inch pipe compared to no pipe, that longer pipe helps accelerate the airflow and really launch it into that intake manifold. Because if you had no pipe and you just had the bell mouth, the air would gain no airspeed. It's gonna be turbulent going through that bell mouth, through the throttle body. And I don't think it's gonna have any time to really condition itself and straighten out. I would argue that to a point, the longer tube probably makes a little bit more power uh, but I'm getting off topic a little bit there. So anyways, guys, I think that pretty much wraps us up for today. Again, to recap, 808 horsepower, hydraulic roller with pump E85. This is not race fuel. And we know from previous testing that C85 does pick up big power. Uh, and we're going to test that again on this motor. So I think we're going to call it for the day. Um, we had 51 hits total on the motor. And... Um, yeah, I am super excited and super proud of the work that we have done here at Smetting and all the, the cam testing and, and everything else. So huge shout out to the team. Thank you all so much for your help. So uh, peak power, we're pretty much set at 30 degrees, 12 and a half AFR. That's where this motor likes it the best. Um, but now in the next video, what, we are, what I want to test or what I want to tune on is, all, is part throttle power. So I want to make, because we're running an electric throttle body, I have the ability to command certain 
uh, throttle body opening positions regardless of where the pedal is. So I want to try capping the throttle body at a max opening of 50% and make a bunch of hits at 50% playing with timing, playing with fuel ratios and start optimizing this motor's power curve at all different uh, throttle position points. So I think we'll just start at 50% next, that's the easiest, and then we're gonna do 75% and then maybe even 25%, I don't know. But I think we're gonna do that in the next video and then we might splash a little C85 in and see what she really can do. So again, thank you guys so much for watching the channel. I love you and I'll see you next time.